أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم Dear brothers and sisters, I will talk about a suggested global Islamic calendar. The basis of Islamic calendar has to be according to the Quran and Sunnah. And if we have to wait for the sighting, actual sighting, then we cannot make a calendar. We have to wait for the evening of the sighting and then decide what happens, what is the outcome of sighting. So that the first thing that I want you to focus on is any proposed calendar, Islamic calendar, has to be based on calculations. Now, Quran talks about calculations. Every one of you knows. Shamsu wal qamaru bi hasban wa ja'ala shams adhiyan wal qamara nuran maqaddarahu manazila li ta'alamu adada sinina wal hisab. So the ayat talk about hisab. Now, what calculation based Islamic calendar can be applied? Among the great Tabeen, Mutarrif ibn Abdullah held the opinion that calculations can be used for the beginning and ending of Ramadan. Taqiyuddin al Thubuki, great Shafi'i jurist, even said that calculations were more reliable than eyesighting. And you all know that mistakes have been made by our dear brothers Muslims who have uh, claimed to have sighted the moon when the moon was not there. And we have reached to a point in scientific calculations that we can calculate very accurately what is the position of the moon in this sky from any location. A famous muhaddith, Sheikh Ahmad Shakir wrote that calculation is most appropriate method to determine the Islamic months compared to sighting by the eye, therefore using them making more, makes more sense and that provides ease for Muslims. Contemporary scholars view, Dr. Yusuf Al-Qaradawi, head of the European Council for, of Fatwa and Research and Fiqh Council of North America concluded in 2007 that the astronomical calculations should be accepted as a basis for Islamic calendar, because there could always be doubts and mistakes in human sightings. Now, Sharia requirement for the Islamic calendar is that Muslims begin Islamic months with assurance that the moon cycle has completed around the earth and the Muslims should be unite, united to follow our religious rituals together. It should be clarified here that Sharia objective is not that Muslims merely conduct moon sighting or remain uncertain until actual sighting is confirmed within some geographical man-made boundaries. India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh used to be one country some 60 years ago. And I was in my childhood, and I observed that sighting was announced on the radio, and then the whole country was united on that announcement. Now there are three countries, Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan, for the same geographical boundaries. And now the decisions are being made by three different countries, and sometimes they're different. Now, why the man-made boundaries should affect our Islamic calendar? That doesn't make sense. So, Ittihadul Matala for the whole globe is the solution. Otherwise, we'll always be bizonal, trizonal calendars. Quranic ayah faman shahida minkum minkum shahra fal yasum also points out towards the concept of ittihadul mutala.
Now, what I would suggest as a principle of global Islamic calendar is that the moon must have completed its cycle around the earth, which means the new moon must be born. The term conjunction is also used for the moon born or moon birth. Conjunction means that the earth and moon and sun come in the same line, which is also termed as new moon. And then for our requirement of making a calendar or starting a month, new moon must become a hilal. Now the hilal, if it is seen by the eye, we cannot put it in calculations, the sighting of the hilal, not with 100% certainty. There are human optics, which cannot be put in calculation. My human eye and your human eye will not be the same, and that could affect actual sighting. Atmospheric conditions from a locality cannot be put in calculations because they keep changing so rapidly. And even if you calculate for the actual uh, atmospheric conditions, you cannot pre-calculate it. So for the calendar, you need pre-calculation. If a global calendar is, is desired, then it must be citable somewhere on Earth. And we can make that by calculation and determine, okay, as long as it is citable somewhere on Earth, then based on the Tihad al concept, we can take that condition and apply it to the whole globe so all the Muslim Ummah on this planet could start the Islamic month on the same day. Now, people uh, forget sometimes that we all Muslims throughout the globe follow a weekday, say for example Friday, starting from international dateline and going westward, that's how a Friday starts. That's how every day starts. So we, if we can all Muslims, if we can pray Friday prayer on one day, why can we not celebrate the beginning of Ramadan or Eid on a big day starting from international dateline? If we differ from, if we propose anything that is different from international dateline, then Islamic calendar would not be in synchronization with the weekday convention. We want to make an Islamic calendar that is, has one Islamic date on one day of the week. Now, to apply this concept, we have to calculate the position of the moon and that its cycle has been completed. You all know that visibility calculations cannot be 100% correct. Therefore, it would be best to use the moon birth calculation with some probability of sighting somewhere on Earth, anywhere on Earth, whether it is a land mass or it's an ocean or it's an island. This is the concept that we can use to make the Islamic calendar. Again, three things are needed. Moon must, be complete, moon must have completed its cycle around the Earth. Hilal must be formed somewhere on Earth. And synchronization with the universally accepted date and dayline convention so that all Muslims in the world would observe religious duties on the same day. Suggested global Islamic calendar. For universal application, the most logical convention point is the reference of the international dateline, which is already universally accepted date, dayline for the whole world. No Muslim have any quarrels about it. 
International deadline is practically used for the beginning of every day, and they have been accepted. This would synchronize the date-date convention. Two conditions are very simple to make such a suggested Islamic calendar. No calculations are required. It is so simple. Any layman can make that calendar. Look at these two conditions I'm trying to point out. If the moon is born between zero hours, zero minutes, and 12 hours, zero minutes, universal time, which means if the moon is born before zero hours, zero minutes at international date line, because international date line to universal time is a 12 hours difference. If the moon is born in such a time frame between zero and 12 universal time, it also means that the moon is born before the weekday that begins at international date line. If that is the case, then the Islamic month begins at the sunset of the same day everywhere on the earth. Zero hours and zero minutes at international date line is the beginning of the weekday, and that should also be the beginning of our Islamic day. I'm not saying Islamic day differs from Maghrib time to zero hours and zero minutes time. All I'm saying is that the Islamic day would then start from the Maghrib of that day when this condition is met between zero and 12 hours of universal time and which also means that it is zero hours and zero minutes at international date line. If the moon is born after 12 universal time, then the Islamic month will begin on the Maghrib time of the next day. And this kind of calendar can be made by any Muslim who can take the data of moon birth, which is accurately calculated and presented on several websites. Several observatories of the world can give you that information. And it is already on the web. And any layman can make this calendar just by looking at 12 o'clock universal time. If it is born before that, the month begins at the Maghrib time of that day, of that evening. If it borns after 12 universal time, the Islamic month begins at the Maghrib of the following day. Now, I have already mentioned why the cutoff point is chosen at as 12 universal time. 12 universal time is also the same as zero hours and zero minutes at international date line when a new day date begins. This 12 universal time would synchronize our Islamic calendar with the same day date convention. Here is a graphical representation of the whole globe that if the moon is born before 12 o'clock universal time, which is also 0 0.00 uh, local time at the international date line, what would happen where the moon can be sighted on that evening, anywhere on the globe? You see here three colored curves. Extreme left is a little cyan or blue color, color light blue color. Then is a gray color. Then is the red color. And beyond the red color is all black. Red color is not shown? But you can talk about it. 
Okay, here's the pointer I could probably say where the red color would be. The red color would be some, somewhere like here. It is, the computer is not projecting over there for some reason. But beyond, on the right of that red color zone, there would be all black color zone. And all black color zone means moon will not be visible on the same evening in that area where the color is all black. The red means it would be visible by telescopes. The gray zone that you see here means it can be seen by some optical aid, ordinary binocular or some low-powered telescope. The cyan or light blue color means it can be seen with the eye, sometimes with difficulty. What, what I mean is if the atmospheric conditions I'm not talking about the clouds. Atmospheric conditions, temperature, pressure, and humidity. If those conditions are not favorable, sometimes the moon is not visible in the light blue zone. So I, I was trying to show here that the moon birth time, you can see the third line from the bottom, yellow colored. The new moon birth time is 1114 universal time which is before 12 universal time, and what happens for the visibility of the moon. That is just to have a comfort that with this proposal, what would be the situation where the sighting may occur. Here is an example of another month when the moon birth is two minutes after 12. 12. Okay, 12.02, the moon is, you can see the third line from the bottom yellow colored, moon birth time is 12.02, so it's after 12. What I have on my computer is a red color zone just somewhere here, which means unless you have a high power telescope, you cannot see it. So that's just an example. The biggest advantage of this proposal is that it requires no calculation. All you have to look is whether it's being born before 12 universal time or after 12 universal time, and you can make a calendar. This moon birth time, which is also called conjunction time, can be easily seen in almanacs and other observatories websites. It, again, just to enforce the idea and focus yourself, if the moon is born before 12 universal time, which is also zero a local time at international dateline, the moon begins on the evening of that day, or the first day of the moon would be on the next day, the first day of the month would be on the next day. If the moon is born after 12 universal time, then the month begins the day after next. The beauty of this calendar I've already mentioned to you is that it requires no calculation. Any layman can make this calendar. And this calendar is based on such principles that it is applicable globally. The concept. No man-made boundaries of the countries. And consideration of the visibility is also there, although it may not be a requirement. Moon born is very accurately calculated. Moon visibility can never be calculated with that accuracy. Benefits of global Islamic calendar. Muslims will not have to wait for the actual sighting and for the decisions by the authorities until past midnight sometimes. Chaos created by mistaken claims of sighting would be eliminated. Knowing Islamic dates ahead of time would be 
would remove all unnecessary financial burden because in planning sometimes communities have to reserve big halls and they don't know which is the exact date ahead of time so they have to reserve it two or three days. This is unnecessary financial burden. Muslims all over the world would be united in observance of their important Islamic dates and re religious duties. Muslims in non-Muslim countries can ask for Islamic holidays officially recognized for schools and governmental authorities. <coughs> Conclusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the knowledge about the motions of the earth and the moon. Mashamtu wal qamaru bi husban. Calculations meet the intent of Quran and Sunnah, and the benefits greatly surpass the consequences faced by false claims and waiting for a decision sometimes past midnight. Global Islamic calendar will unite all Muslims in the world for religious observances. And that's the point of my talk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to the right path and forgive us if we make any mistakes. Ameen.